Let's see, scroll back up here. So Joanne, you talked about solutions companies are using, seventh generation, but you didn't mention anything about what people can do. What can, should an attendee tonight do regarding their plastic use? Um, pay attention to what you buy and try and find it with non-plastic options. That's not always possible. Um, know what kind of plastics you can recycle in your community. And again, you can't always find what you want uh, when you do that. Um, when the pandemic's over, buy in bulk, um, look for local solutions and encourage local folks to not use plastics, but to use reusables, um, those sorts of things. Uh, another question, who is dumping plastic in the ocean? Uh, I don't know if that has a short answer, a concise answer, but maybe you have some insight. Fishermen. Fishermen, uh, cruise ships, and then um, they've identified seven different rivers that are responsible for a lot of the ocean uh, that go in, and a lot of it is in countries that don't have good waste management systems, um, but it's also making it into um, our litter and storms. Um, but there's plastic from many sources. I don't claim to be an expert on ocean plastics. Uh, uh, <laughs> what are the real steps the provincial government towards sustainability and a circular economy. Do we have another hour? Um, yeah, I don't even know where to start with that. Um, I think looking at the insides of the circles in the, in the butterfly diagram that's a circular economy, um, looking at ways that we push everything towards being able to move everything to its highest use for as long as possible. So um, repairing, uh, remanufacturing, reusing, um, and really trying to find ways to make that happen and to make it normal so that um, we don't just buy something and say, oh, well, I can recycle it later if I don't like it, um, you know, because that's not honoring the package or the product. It's a short answer. It could be a very big answer. So thank you. <laughs> We've got more questions. Uh, if you could wave your magic wand and get rid of a problem plastic product out in the market, what would you change? all of them that have more than one material in them. So combination of foil, plastic, paper, all together in one, really, really hard to recycle that. Um, combinations, a lot of the pouches have more than one, they have layers and there's different plastics in the layers, you know, like so anything that doesn't have sort of a single type of plastic, and then styrofoam. <laughs> Always styrofoam, yep. Okay, um, next question. It sounded like Canada was also planning to pass law regulations about making producers responsible for their plastic product. Um, Canada as a government, is to do that, I don't think they can. There's, I think it's provincial jurisdiction. So um, it's up to the provinces. And most of them are moving in the direction of 100% producer responsibility. Um, Alberta's talking about it. Manitoba is, yeah, there's a lot of talking about it. And uh, Ontario's on, on, the, on the path of it. Quebec has said they're going to do it. So it's coming, but it's, um, not necessarily going to be exactly the same in every province. Uh, 
Uh, this was our comment or question. Thanks. It's hard not to feel overwhelmed. Please comment on what the bigger cities could do and what consumers could do. And I think we may have covered a lot of that, but I wanted to share. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, I think we need to have more of a focus on reduction and reuse, repair, and um, that can be done a lot locally. So I think to the extent that municipalities can encourage businesses, local businesses to be sustainable. Um, and, and there's a lot of movement right now towards supporting local. So I think if we can keep that going, um, we can do a lot. Okay. Um, frozen veggies used to come in in your stand up packages, do you know why? And is one better than the other? So have you noticed any changes in, in product packaging like that? Sure, they, I mean, you can still buy frozen in, in, the, in the plastic bag type, but pouches are coming, becoming more and more popular all the time uh, on, in food packaging. In terms of recycling, mm, nobody in Saskatchewan takes either of those products. Um, other than uh, like a couple of retailers uh, that take plastic bags as a, you know, would take the plastic bags. But um, until they figure out the pouches better, uh, there's nothing to do with them. And I don't know why they switched. Um, possibly because they claim that they can be reclosed again. Hmm. Okay. Do you think the federal government's single-use plastic efforts will lead to large-scale changes in our plastic consumption habits. Yeah, if they if they pass the the, the ban on single-use, yeah, I think it'll, it'll do a lot of things. One is it's gonna it's gonna change. They're only banning plastics, so they're not banning single-use items. So they're only halfway there on that one, but it'll definitely change what people are offered. And I think it will change. It's gonna get us all thinking about it for sure. Uh, could you please say more about additives in plastic and their toxicity? No, okay. <laughs> it's not my area of expertise, I'm afraid. Um, I know they exist. Um, I know flame retardants in certain things are usually, uh, there's been a lot of ones that are, have been uh, very problematic and certainly a problem for recycling as well. Um, flame retardants are usually in more durable plastic like electronics and things. But I'm afraid I don't know anything specific about the additives. I just know they're there. Okay. I recognize the name of the person who asked that question. And I think that they will understand <laughs> that you are not an expert in that area. Uh, next question. Plastics and agriculture will, were big in the news a while ago. Example, things like plastic sheeting to cover bales and grain, but that seems to have just disappeared. Do you know if there are still initiatives going on in the province to reduce our recycle agricultural plastics? Yes, um, there's a program for grain bags, which are those things that look like great big white caterpillars that you see on mm -hmm. in the fields. Uh, there's a program that um, is a, an extended producer responsibility program where there's a fee that farmers pay and then they bring it back them back to be recycled. And there's 30 or 40 places in the province that farmers can take back their grain bags. Mm. They've started a twine recycling pilot just um, in late 2020, so farmers can take their twine back. Um, some of the plastics, like um, the ones around the bales and the net wrap and things, they don't have programs for yet because they're really awful to try and recycle. So um, they're waiting. There's also a pilot program for seed bags. Um, that's going to be across the province this summer um, 
that are there they'll be collected there's the sort of great big ones that are woven and then some of the other ones that are a combination of paper and plastic that they're taking for um, energy recovery but there is there's quite a bit going on in uh, agricultural okay Are single-use coffee cups actually recyclable? I think Sarkan stopped accepting them at some point. Not sure if they do now. Tim Hortons also stopped accepting them for recycling. Do you know what that's about? Uh, single-use coffee cups have uh, a layer of plastic inside to keep the liquid from coming out, the hot liquid from coming out. Um, and we used to be able to recycle them in Saskatoon. Um, the recycling markets aren't great because you have to deal with that plastic layer. Um, and Saskatoon, um, city of Saskatoon stopped allowing those to be collected a couple of years ago. So there's no place to take them at the moment. Um, and there is quite a bit of work. Well, there is initiatives out there that are looking at trying to find solutions for reusable to make those reusable systems, because I think everybody kind of sees that if we could make reusable work, um, then we could avoid a whole lot of waste. Um, but single use coffee cups, typically not considered plastic. They're paper. Okay. Um... What is being done to develop alternatives to plastics in packaging? Is there a research program funded by the government? Um, yeah, I think, I, I don't know all the details that they gave some money to um, some different um, to look at ways to make plastics and other packaging from bio products. So I know there's a company in Creek that got some money to create products with them. Um, yeah, but I think it was, no, I just, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't remember the details, but there was, there are announcements just in the last couple of weeks, you could Google it and find some. Okay, try and find some of that. What is the environmental harm of styrofoam specifically? Can you go into that a little bit? Um, it, is it contaminant and like it, when it's thrown out, it breaks up into tiny little pieces and gets everywhere. Um, but uh, other than that, basically it can be recycled, but it's so light that it's really hard to collect enough for anybody to want to do anything with it. Um, and there are other alternatives to styrofoam that provide similar levels of protection for products if companies would be uh, willing to invest in them. But nobody in Saskatchewan accepts styrofoam for recycling in, in a regular uh, curbside program, so. And I see there's another comment from an attendee to, they sent it to all panelists, but I'm gonna share it with all attendees as well. Tharkan has never accepted disposable coffee cups. So I that is that. true. Yeah. Uh, okay, the takeout and delivery world is booming due to COVID-19. Uh, two parts. One, how much does this irk you? <laughs> two, what is the best type of packaging that a restaurant could use to provide takeout delivery more consciously? Okay. Um, yeah. You want to see me explode for the first answer? <laughs> um, the best option is probably something that could be composted provided that their customers get the city's green carts. So um, because the green carts do accept soiled paper products in them. Um, so either that or um, participating in a system of reusing, you know, where the, 
you pay a deposit and then you're a regular customer and either you drop off your dirty containers for washing or um, you know, you're, um, you get them on your next delivery kind of thing. I don't know that anybody does that, but those would be the two off the top of my head that I can think of. Okay, and there's one more question in the chat. Um, how serious is the issue of contamination of what could be recycled by non-compostable items? Is there a solution? Can you read that again? By non-compostable items or by compostable items? Non-compostable. How serious is the issue of contamination of what could be recycled by non-compostable items? Is there a solution? Okay. Yeah, there's a lot going on in there. It's... Uh, well, if they were talking about compostable products being... Contaminated up, by non-compostable. Recycling. Oh, I have a correction. Okay. Uh, how serious is the issue of contamination of what could be recycled by non-recyclable items? So oh, in that it's sphere. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite big. Um, there's sort of two different types of contamination. One is this does not belong in the blue bin at all. Like people give us their textiles, not us, but they give, they put in textiles, they put in baseball bats, they put in all sorts of things that they think should be able to be recycled that the uh, community the recycler has no way to handle. And the other is that there's a lot of things that, you know, one would think should be recycled, but aren't accepted in the program. So um, the one thing I didn't talk about at all was the labeling system for plastics, the one to seven. And you gotta watch Plastic Wars, people. Go to the CBC website on Passionate Eye and watch Plastic Wars. And they talk about, you know, the plastic industry wanted to make it seem like their products were recyclable. And so they, they chose a labeling system with the chasing arrows. And they've switched it to triangles now, but they wouldn't ever get rid of the triangle because they still want to give the impression that if it has the label, it can be recycled everywhere. And that's not the case. Um, so uh, there's a lot of things that people assume can be recycled because they have the symbol on it, but they're not collected in a, any particular program or their particular program. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> The I'm very good at, at Googling while I listen. It's also, I, for those who don't know in the recording what just happened, I found the link to Plastic Wars on CBC and it's now in the chat. And it's also on CBC Gem if you're interested in, uh, in watching it there. And I think that is the end of our question. Yes. So this is your last chance, everyone, to ask a question of Joanne Fedick. I'll give you a few minutes. I've put the link to the SPL YouTube page in the chat as well for you to watch past presentations. And this one will be up as soon as I can get it edited and posted, which is sometimes longer than I'd like. And I'm also putting the link for our short survey in the chat for those who want to give us some feedback. It takes about one minute, maybe five, if you're really intentional and thoughtful in your responses. Excellent. I forgot to... Um... I had a list of a couple of extra things in my presentation at the end that one of them was a link to Plastic Wars. Um, hang on. Mm -hmm. I'll um, there. There. I'll take this time also to say the next presentation is on May 11th. Let me just find some of that. 
info. Oh, there we go. How plastic is made, plastic wars. Retail so counts. How plastic is made was just a, a good article of, that's just straight up, like tells you everything about all the different plastics. And then uh, the Retail Council of Canada keeps track, has a, a page that they keep track of all the um, single use bylaws and um, bag bans and stuff. And it's pretty comprehensive, so. Right, before everyone starts trickling out, um, I will say that the next presentation